Hello, welcome to the world of wings, worms, and wonder. I'm Kelly Johnson, your creative nature connection guide. So today we're here to talk about outdoor learning and um, I wanna show you my books and some of the things in them that will really help you teach outdoors and not just nature subjects. Well, yes, all the majority of the lessons in here are art and nature based. This is a resource beyond just those lessons. So this was my first book, Wings, Worms, and Wonder, and it's divided into five section chapters um, color-coded. So the pink section is the first section, and this is gonna be your real go-to for outdoor teaching and learning, getting set up for success. Um, this book is targeted at elementary age students, but it is also used in some middle schools with um, in beginning nature programs as far as the lesson plans, but the information in the pink section is applicable to across the board ages. Um, so this section is a resource section and it goes through not just the introduction, um, talks about lots of different progressive educators who have taught outdoors and teach outdoors, um, all subjects, and lots of encouraging sense of wonder, um, the role of education, lots of the sort of methodology, philosophy, and then getting started. This is a key chapter for teaching outside. Logistics, of course, right? And um, lots of sort of, this is about composting and gardening, of course, but materials for teaching outside, I call them field materials here. Rebirth of the Sitopon, amazing tool from the Girl, thank you Girl Scouts, uh, for sitting outdoors on the ground. We can't all have lovely benches and outdoor teaching tables or enough of those for an entire class. So sit upons are a super resourceful way to be able to sit on the ground and not have to worry about dew, not have to just moisture if it had rained the night before. Um, it really helps with itchiness of grass and things like that. So sit upons are amazing tools, can't stress them enough. Um, lots of tips for sewing your own patterns. Um, different field materials, uh, little pouches and things for taking their supplies outside. So you're gonna need a clipboard for their paper. You're gonna need pencil. If each of them have a little bag, a little field bag, you can use it not only for nature journaling, but for your regular classroom teaching as well. And so there's patterns for making field bags. It's a great job to have room mothers get on. Um, using indoor extension materials outdoors. Um, so just lots of, and then it goes into nature journaling, but nature journaling also ties in, uh, creating notebooks, that's just fun, but nature poetry. So teaching language arts outside is really fantastic, lots of inspiration. And then it, the book goes into the chapters of wings, which is the yellow chapter, and then worms, which is the green chapter, and Wonder, oh, well, Oz the first section of Wonder, which is the blue chapter, and there's lots of art lessons in there and outdoor art lessons. And then the final chapter is resources, so print and online resources. This golden chapter, literally hundreds of resources, both online and in print materials for you for teaching outside, outdoor learning. Uh, one of them in here is Nature Watch, which is an awesome um, web store, and they even sell my books. So if you wanted to buy some resources, you could buy the books while you're at it all from one place. Um, just can't, nice people, family owned, such a great uh, resource, Nature Watch it is, and that, but that's in here. And I'll link to it as well. Wonder and Wander is targeted at birth to six. So if this one, Wings, Worms, and Wonder is six to 12 target age range, Wonder and Wander is zero to six. Lots of information in the beginning about being outside with young children, creating common languages. And again, the first chapter in this, the resource chapter, it's laid out exactly the same as Wings, Worms, and Wonder with resource chapter, three lesson, or this one has two lesson chapters, and then a um, the resources at the end. So by resource chapter, I really mean in information, like methodology, 
getting set up, like learning about learning kind of information. But um, so in the intro here, these have questions and all sorts of, both are fully colored, beautiful illustrations. But um, you can talk about, or I talk about expectations, like setting expectations, but then having realistic expectations, just getting out there, how to do it. Um, fear, there's a lot of fear with bugs and things that come not only with young children, but with older children as well. So how to overcome those and then getting started, you know, risk assessment, um, risk benefit analysis, teaching that alternatives to being careful, saying be careful all the time or, you know, alternative language um, that you can use. But just lots of setting up sensorial stations and, and that's a good one. Um, also, any Montessori teachers out there might be, well, how am I going to teach using the Montessori materials just outside? Well, you know, you have to judge you're probably not going to bring the decanomial box outside. <laughs> that's not our pin maps or something. That's not realistic. So setting those realistic expectations for which lessons lend themselves to being taught outside. And a lot of them do. And I, I would mostly teach group lessons outside rather than individual work. Um, lessons that are more story based or more abstract or science experiments where we have just an experiment on the rug and children come up as a group to participate out of the group to participate. So that kind of lesson lends itself better. But um, yeah, this has a whole section on tools and materials for successful outdoor teaching. Lots of, lots and lots of great information. Again, not just for little children. The information is great for lots of ages. Um, using Beatrix Potter, y'all know I love that. Act the extra activities for teaching language arts. Whole section on journaling with young children, but could also be applied to journaling with beginners. Um, and then we go into our lesson plans. Wonder and Wander are the two um, sections in this book. Here's like creating a nature art journal basket. Well, you could do this as creating an outdoor classroom basket as well and assign to different students the roles. Like, you're in charge of bringing the pencils, you're in charge of bringing the clipboards, or, you know, they'll assign those types of jobs. So then we've got all the lesson plans. And let's see in here, the Wander section. Obviously, if we're doing outdoor teaching, we're not doing too much wandering, <laughs> but um, still good to know. Um, lots of fun games and lessons. And again, these activities I've adapted to use with older children as well. Um, and then the end, get to the last page, it's another resource section and the resources are different for the most part. Um, there might be a couple shops that overlap um, or like my blog or something, but, but generally, again, hundreds of resources for you. And these two are key. They work great together to set, um, but these are amazing resources that were developed out of my graduate work, out of 20 years being a Montessori teacher and a few more years before that teaching art in all kinds of different environments, indoors and outdoors. So hopefully these will help all y'all, whether it's homeschool, public school, private school, Montessori school, Waldorf school, um, any kind of school, any time adults and children are learning and teaching together and want to go outdoors for more ventilation and just because it renews the spark in the children. Outdoor lessons that might be a little after lunch kind of, ugh, you know, great to just move them outside. Just teach them outside. If you, you can do silent reading outside, you can do story time outside. Little things where you would kind of less physical lessons just move them outside. It's as easy as that with the tips setting up for success in, in the blog post as far as, you know, setting those expectations, it's not recess. Once you get that groundwork laid, teaching outside is a breeze and I know from experience. But also just wanted to show my other two books in case Pressed is a pressed flower book, uh, a flower pressing book with lots of prompts. I don't think I've ever, I don't know if I've ever showed this one online, so I just thought it'd be fun. We're talking about books, show them all. Um, and this has a lot of great ideas for how to press flowers. This, is, this would be better more for homeschoolers, less of a book, unless you wanted to do a classroom 
flower pressing book where the class all worked on it together, which could be pretty neat in its own right. Although I have not done that, I can't say I haven't tested how that would work. But if you do test it, let me know. I'd love to hear. Um, because, let's see, here. There's lots of blank pages where maybe each child in the class has a page and they can add to it. And it could be pretty cool. And then the 12 month art and nature journal is, uh, I know I've showed this one before. For example, July, each has a coloring page with flower symbolism each month of the year. Each month has a thumbnail sketch page, which this could be pretty cool to use as a class if you had a class of 30 or less, um, or however many days are in the month. But um, then each child could be assigned a day and they could, they could draw something each month. Journal prompt pages. And someone asked me on Instagram, which was a great question that I hadn't thought of before, are the prompts in this book different than the prompts in my um, Nature Journal prompt deck for children? And the answer is yes, the prompts are 100% different. And they're also 100% different from the Wonder Wednesday Journal Club that I uh, do in the email, in the Wonder Wednesday email. So all the prompts are always different. Then some free pages, free drawing pages. But again, this book might be more suited for homeschooling or virtual learning. If you're if you're uh, foraying into homeschooling this year for safety, family safety reasons, um, these two books are great to use for at home learning to be used as a family. But I would say this one maybe a little younger if you did it with the children. But I would say probably nine and up. But although this book I invented for adults, <laughs> but it turns out uh, a lot of a lot of kids around age nine to twelve they also really like this book, and a lot of kids all ages like this book. So I hope that helps. I hope that these two books, Wonder and Wander, and Wings, Worms, and Wonder, can be really great resources for you this fall in a foray into teaching and learning outdoors. If you have any other questions or wanna brainstorm ideas about your specific situation, please don't hesitate to email me through the contact page um, on my website, wingswormsandwonder.com, or um, get in touch through Instagram, at wingswormsandwonder. I will be happy to share what I know. Everything in here is, is yours, so. Let me know, stay in touch. Uh, if, you, if you try any of this, uh, tell me how it worked in your neck of the woods because you know here in Florida, we have to think about fire ants, sudden thunderstorms. Um, every area has their own sort of thing that can be a challenge, but uh, all of those challenges can be overcome. So I hope everyone stays safe and healthy and embraces their outdoor learning adventures this year. Bye.